the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit more about plant pooling. We are actually going to chart out or graph out the colors of our plant pooling based on the numbers you're getting with the yarn you're using. This is something really simple and it's relatively similar to the plant pooling charting software that's out there, but I want you to understand exactly how the charts are made up and how the colors actually work with one another. I think it will better explain the whole process and I think if you understand the process of how the colors are actually working together to create the really great Argyle look, you'll have a better chance of success. All you need for this video is some graph paper, some colored pencils, preferably in the same colors of the yarn you're using, and then obviously your variegated yarn you're going to be using and the hook size you want to use. Go ahead and grab those things and we can jump in. Let's have a refresher of what plan pooling Argyle is. As you look down here, you can see that I have worked up a nice little swatch here, and what I've done is I have planned out that each color on every other row will shift over by one stitch. So if we're looking at this green stitch right here, if we go up two rows and over one, you'll see that there's a green stitch there. Up two rows and over one, a green stitch there. So I get this really great diagonal line. Now I make my plan pulling using the moss stitch and I've also done it with some other stitches and you can as well. This video we are going to strictly adhere to the moss stitch of plan pooling, okay? Because I think that's where we are lacking some videos out there on YouTube and I want to make sure that I'm addressing those needs for you. So now that you kind of have a refresher of what it is plan pooling is, let's figure out how we can establish the plan pooling placement of the colors before we get to row three. You didn't think that was possible? It totally is. For the example of how to chart out your planned pooling, I'm going to be using Red Heart Super Saver in the color Bright Mix, and I am using a size J or a six millimeter crochet hook. Now what I want you to do to begin with is just like I have you start any of the other plan pooling projects, what you will do is chain through a full color sequence of the yarn and then as you're working back I want you to put the first single crochet into the fourth chain from hook, chain one, and then single crochet around your chain chain one, single crochet around your chain until you get through your full color sequence. Once we've done this, we now want to write down how many stitches we get in each color. This is important because what we will do now is plot out how we need to have those colors shift every other row. And it's all gonna be based on the number of stitches you get on your yarn and your hook. So we'll use my numbers for this example, but if you're following along and you wanna use your numbers, you could go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and we're gonna plot out our numbers. Now I want to remind you here at the beginning, this initial, initial skipped chain three counts as a stitch. So we are gonna plot that one first, okay? And I will use my, my handy dandy colored pencils right here, and I'm gonna use purple for this chain three. And because I'm right-handed and I work in this direction when I crochet, I am going to plot out my work going that same direction. So all I'm doing right here is I'm filling in a box with the color purple. And so that represents this stitch. Now I have three pink stitches, so I'm gonna fill in three boxes. Again, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna fill those boxes into the left of my initial. If you're left-handed, you could fill the boxes in this way because you work in that direction. So I'm gonna fill in three boxes with pink. And these boxes represent single crochets, so I am not representing my chain stitches with a color. I actually want my chain stitches to be represented by the line between the boxes. That's why I'm not filling in the whole box, okay? Next, you can see here I have three blue stitches, so let's fill in three blue boxes. So there's one, two, three. Then I have three green, one, two, three. And then I have three blue, one, two, three. And then I have one, two, three, four purple. 
one, two, three, four. At this point, you need to decide if you are going to add a stitch or decrease a stitch. If you followed along all of my videos, you know that I like to subtract one stitch. So what I would do is I would eliminate this last purple right here. So I am literally going to cross it out with my pen, okay? So what we have here now is we have one purple, three pink, three blue, three green, three blue, three purple for a total of four purples, okay? You have to count this one, and then you have those three. So that means on this row, I have four purple and three of all my other colors, which also means that on every other row from here on out, I will always have four purple and three of all the other colors. Now it's all a matter of placing those colors in the correct place. So let's turn the corner and go the opposite direction, which would be our row two. So I'm going to put a little arrow here to help you guys know that when you're reading a chart like this, when we're turning our work back and forth, you will draw this way and then you'll draw this way and then go back sort of like a snake. Now we eliminated this one purple right here. So let's go ahead and do that on our samples. So you can see what that would look like. I would take out one purple here and there we go. Okay. So that's where we are. This sample right here that I have chart, uh, swatched up is the same as this down here. So what we would do now is we would chain two, correct? So let's go ahead and do our chain two. Chain one, chain two, and turn. And now this is where previously you had really not a whole bunch of an idea of what color needed to come next. You just hoped that your tension was the same and everything worked out well after row two so that you could get to row three and, and pray to God that everything was in place. So what we're going to do now is we are going to see here where should these colors actually be. So what I want you to do is we know that when we did our chain two, it came up here and we have purple. Now, you'll notice that I'm making this one just a little bit different. And the reason I'm making this one different is I want you to know that this purple is representing the chain two stitch. And yes, it's an actual stitch. And that's important because this will be our number one, okay? The next stitch that we do, we actually create the stitch between these two stitches, right? We, we create it in the chain one space when we're using moss stitch. So the next stitch needs to be pink. We do one pink, two pink, three pink. So what I do here is I use the lines of my graph to help me visually see, okay, this is where that stitch is going to go, okay? This will also come in handy as you're trying to look for two rows down, because whenever you're working with a full square, you'll go to the next full square down. Whenever you're working with the lines, you'll go to the next lines down. It'll make sense here in a minute. As we continue on, we want to maintain our same number of stitches in each color. So I'm just filling in as I did before. I'm just creating the lines. So I'm doing three in each color. And now I'm back to my purple. One, two, three. Now I could say here, oh, well, do I put a mark out there or do I not put a mark out there? Here's how we're going to tell. How many purples do I have on row two now? Well, I have one here two, three, four, and we want four. Our magic number is four for purple. So we are done with our purple, correct? Awesome, that's what we want. As we move on to row three, let's go ahead and go like this so that you can see row three. We will begin with our chain three, which counts as a stitch. So I'm going to fill in this box here because it's our chain three. And then because you might be a little confused, you could be like, okay, well, that means I have one, two, three, four. And so if I try and get another one here, it's going to automatically pink, be pink. I'm going to start stacking. Okay. And that's where everything goes haywire. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to jump in here to the center bit and let's fill in the center bit here before we fill in these outer edges. And then that will tell us what color we need on the outer edges, meaning we are on row three, so the color of these stitches on row three are, um, it's necessary that we look at row one to make sure that we get a stitch on the diagonal, that our stitches move. So let's go down here to the pinks. 
And let's go to the last pink. We know that this last pink, we don't want one, two, three pinks. We want our last pink to be right here. So if we are here, we go to the diagonal, we know we want one pink right there, and we want that to be our last pink. And we know we have three pinks total, so we'll go one, two, and then that's our third, okay? So if I do that, and then I carry on in my pattern, I can see, okay, diagonal from that blue gives me my blue right here my blue right here, and my blue right here. Diagonal from this green goes green right here, green right here, green right here. We're gonna go blue, so we go blue right here, blue right here, blue right here. We're back to our purple. We go purple right here, purple right here, and we're out of space, okay? So we go back to how many stitches do we have in each color? We have one, two, three purple. We have the correct number of all the ones in the center, which leads us to believe we need to make sure we get that purple stitch right there. Can you see how that works out? So if we get that purple stitch there, that makes it so that our stitches are starting to be offset by one. Okay, that's very important. By filling in this center portion and then counting the number of stitches we have in each color again, we're able to, di to distinguish what color that stitch needs to be. Now, if you're just following along and just, you know, ho-hum, crocheting, crocheting, and not forcing the color of the stitch to be what it needs to be, you're gonna get off kilter and it's not gonna turn out as crisp as a regular plan pooling argyle. So you need to make sure that you force the colors to be what you need them to be. Having said that, I know that right here at this little corner, it's going to be a little bit tight because I've been getting regularly just four stitches out of my purple. Whereas right here, I need to force one, two, three, four, and kind of get the fifth right there. Okay. So it might be a little bit tight, but it's going to turn out pretty all right. Okay. I've had success with this every time you guys, no problem. So now as we go on, we're on row four. Let's go to row four. So we have one, two. We know that our turning chain is gonna be purple. And we know that because we have one, two, and then here's our turning chain purple, okay? And we could go ahead and just like we did before where we filled in the center ones first before we went back to fill out the outside ones, we could do that again. Remember this time, we're gonna drop down two rows, so not the full box row, but the line row, which will help you immensely. And you wanna remember that because this row is working back this way, we want our stitches to shift over this direction in our chart. As you're working on the actual crochet, it will shift to the right, but as we're looking at the chart, it will look like it's shifting to the left, okay? Just based on the chart, because it's a, a two-dimensional piece, okay? So what we wanna do here is this pink right here on the chart will shift over up one and over. So it'll be right there. This pink up one and over, this pink up one and over. So now we have our three pinks showing and they're starting to work on the diagonal. Then we can go on and fill in, just like before, all of our color sequence. One, two. So now I have one, two, three, which lets me know that this one needs to be purple. Can you see how that works? Let's do a row five, because I want you to see row five here. As I do row five, I do my turning chain. So there's my turning chain. And let's fill in the center bits again before we know what's going on out here. So I can come down here and I already know, okay, here's this purple. That means this one here needs to be purple right there, okay? See how my purple is starting to go on the diagonal? Which already lets me know, okay, this needs to be purple too because those purple need to be all in a row. You see how that works out? So then as I go on, I'm here at the pink, sorry. I have pink, I go one, two, three. I'm at blue, I go one, two, three. I'm at green, I go one, two, three. I'm at blue, one, two, three, which leads me with one space, which would be purple, which equals out one, two, three, four purple, which is exactly what I need. Can you see how that's working out? 
So I have stitches that are in the full boxes, shifting to the right as I'm looking at the graph. And as I'm looking at the graph, my stitches that are represented by the lines are starting to shift to the left, okay? So let's see here. We have row one, row two, row three, row four, and row five. Do you notice anything significant about rows one and two and rows three and four? And then what we would find out with five and six. What I have noticed is that the rows tend to be the same. So one and two are identical. Three and four are identical. Five and six, I don't know if they're identical. Why don't we check it out and see? So let's do row six and see how this works out. So for row six, we have our turning chain. And now we have to go ahead and fill in our boxes. So let's find the last purple. So this would be our last purple, and we know it wants to go up and over one. So this would be where that purple goes, which means this one needs to be purple. And then we continue on. So pink would be up and over, up and over, up and over. Can you see how this is working out right here? So essentially, as you get this going, each row is just like the last. So I have one, two, three, four purple, three of all the others, and everything is working out okay. Let's see if that holds true for row seven. Doesn't hurt us, right? So row seven here, we have our chain stitch right here, and then we start filling in. So we can say, we're looking at the boxes, remember? So let's find the last purple, and so the last purple would be up and over, so that lets us know that these would all be purple. You see that? And then we can carry on. So I'm looking at the boxes. I go one, two, three, so up and over. I can go this all the way down the row. And what's going to be cool here is because I started off with my four purple, I will not be ending with purple this time. And we're actually going to see a color change happening here. So let's keep going and see how this works out. And then we have one, two, three. All right, so that's row seven. Let's go ahead and check out row eight. Row eight starts off with a chain two that is purple. We find the th last purple right here, so up and over. So there is my purple. And then I would just fill these purples in right there. And then I would carry on. So Let's see here, my purple goes, oh, I filled them in. Shoot, I already messed up. So these should be lines. Should be a line and a line and a line. My apologies. And then this goes pink, 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 blue, 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 green, 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 blue, blue, blue. Can you see that? So row eight is just like row seven. And if we're good and everything shifts, row nine should be just like row 10. When we start row nine, we are changing our outside color again. So our chain two is going to be blue. So let's go ahead and color that in blue. And what that will allow now is for us to look at the color from below and shift them over just like before. Three and four, okay? You see how that works? So as the colors come over here on the side, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and that's where the sides can get a little bit hairy because you might need to force a color a little bit more than what you would have done before. But it's, it's okay, it's what we want because the center here is the portion that we're most concerned about. We wanna make sure that those colors all line up to the right by one. You see how that works? Any sort of abnormality that you might get on the edge can be hidden with a border. So don't stress out too much about that. It's gonna be perfectly natural. And what you'll notice is at the end of row nine, I still have my three blues just like I had before. Remember, I have two sets of blues. So I'm still maintaining the same number of stitches on my row, 
But as I go from row eight to row nine, I have to force one extra stitch a little bit over here. And when I say stitch, it's my chain twos. I have to force that color right there to be the blue. Now, having said that, I could tell you right now that these chain twos here, if it's blue and a little bit of purple because I'm working into it, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. And I know that I've said in the 10 tips video that you don't wanna have any half colors, but when it comes to the turning chains, I think if you need to fudge a little bit and have a little bit of a partial color there, that's gonna be okay because it's mostly hidden. So once we get to row nine, if we test out our theory that every other or every two rows are just alike, we can see here that our first turning chain here will be blue and we can coincide that with the diagonal from below, right? So we have purple, we have purple, 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 purple. So there's my four purples, pink, 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 blue, blue, blue. Green, 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 and blue, blue, and there's my three blues, one, two, three, and there's my second set of blues right there, and you'll see here that row nine is just like row 10. Can you see how this is working out? So if I were to start to shade these in, okay, I'm just going to shade in using my colored pencils here, we can begin to see how our argyle will begin to look. Can you see this here? Hopefully this will help you a little bit here. Just planning it out and having a little bit more sense of direction. I think that being able to plot it out like this and seeing how the beginning chain um, actually works into the pattern is really helpful. I find it helpful. So uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to make sure I showed you. But as I do this, and everything kind of gets filled in like so, we can see I'm getting the cool Argyle look in the directions I want, and this is how it will begin to show up in my Bright Mix colorway. So there you go. Hopefully learning how to chart out your own plan pulling Argyle chart will be helpful and it will help you have better success in your future plan pooling. The biggest thing to remember is that on the chart, if it's supposed to be pink, make sure the color of that stitch is pink. If it's supposed to be green, make sure the color of that stitch is green as you're working on your scarf or blanket or whatever it is you're working on. The best way to make the plan pooling Argyle work is to force the colors to be the colors you need them. Let me see, I'll tell you this again. The, we want to force the color of the stitch to be the color on your graph, okay? So if you are coming up short a color or too many colors, you're gonna have to change up your tension a little bit and adjust and make them plan out accordingly. Hopefully this helps you out and you will have great success in your future plan pooling projects. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I'll talk to you again soon. Looking for more Marley Bird? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Click right down there and you will find more videos just like this teaching you how to knit or crochet, all brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. Go ahead, click away. Don't be shy. Don't forget to smash that like button.